Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the worksheet for 10-5 Pythagorean Theorem, a review of the Pythagorean Theorem for the 8th grade. Now as you can see, there are some questions that are already solved, so you already have some guided examples. You also have this set up up here at the top of the page that again guides you through the procedure that you've seen in class. So let's go ahead and go down and look at number 2. We're supposed to determine whether a triangle with the given side lengths can be or is a right triangle. So, as we take a look at this question, we've got sides of 3, 13.3, and 14. And we're supposed to figure out if that can make a right triangle. So, hopefully what you remember from the instruction is that the longest side would always have to represent the hypotenuse of the right triangle. That's the way this works. The longest side is always the hypotenuse. The other two sides are the legs. So the legs here are going to be 3 and 13.3. So I'm going to take this guy and square it, and this guy and square it, and add these two up. And what has to happen here is, according to the formula, it has to be the same thing as the hypotenuse squared. Well, if I take 3 and square it, 3 squared is 9. And if I take 13.3 and square it, 13.3 squared is 176.89. Well, of course, if I add those up, that's going to give me 185.89. Now, that's got to be the same as the hypotenuse squared. So that's got to be the same as 14 squared. Well, 14 squared, 14 times 14, is 196. Well, as you can see, these two numbers do not end up being equal. Because remember, the theorem says that the sum of the legs squared has to be the same as the hypotenuse squared. And that did not happen here. So no, this cannot be a right triangle. Now they're asking us to do uh, work through the theorem again here. In question number five, they've given us two of the sides, and we are supposed to figure out the third, having been given two of those sides. What we have here is five, which is going to have to be a leg. Remember, the legs of the right triangle always end up making the right angle. Well, these two sides make up the right angle, so these guys are the legs. B is clearly a leg, because remember in the formula, A and B are always the legs. And 13 here, that's going to be the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. It's always the longest side. So the formula says take the legs, square them, and add them up. So we got a 5 and B. And that's supposed to be the same thing as the hypotenuse squared, which is 13. Well, we can simplify the numbers we've got here because 5 squared is 25. B squared isn't going anywhere yet, but 13 squared, 13 squared simplifies. 13 squared is 169. So 25 plus some number here has got to make 169. Well, solve the equation. That's not too bad. I'm going to knock 25 off both sides, and b squared is equal to 144. All right, so I know b squared is 144, but remember, look back at the triangle. This doesn't say b squared. It says b. So I've got to get back from b squared to b. How do I get from b squared to b? I take the square root. So I'm going to go ahead and take the square root all the way across here. Square root of b squared is b. Square root of 144 is 12. So the missing side length must measure 12 feet. Bottom of the page, doing the same thing we just did, except instead of having drawn a triangle, they're just giving you the different parts of the formula flat out. They're telling us here in number 8 that A is 6.4 and B is 4.8. So I'm going to change A into 6.4 into the formula, B into 4.8 in the formula, and solve. So again, a squared, 6.4 squared, plus b squared, 4.8 squared, equals my hypotenuse squared. Well, this one's nice because I don't have to treat this like solving an equation. I will have to do the square root to take care of c squared, but I'm not going to have to move things to the other side and whatnot. And notice the directions here say use a calculator because they're throwing a lot of decimals at you, which is fine. 6.4 squared changes into 40.96. Four point eight squared. Four point eight times four point eight is twenty-three point zero four. Well, when I 
add those two guys up, I end up with 64. C squared equals 64. Well, again, this triangle isn't labeled A squared, B squared, and C squared. That's just the formula. The triangle would be labeled A, B, and C. So to finish now, you're going to take the square root all the way across to come up with C. The square root of 64 is 8. So the missing side of the triangle measures 8 meters. All right, finally we'll take a look at the top of the back side here. Your assignment ends at question number 16 here. It says to find the height, or find the length rather, of each hypotenuse to the nearest tenth, assume that the side of each small square on the grid is two units. Use the grid to draw a right triangle. All right, so as you can see, they've drawn the triangles here for us, and we're asked to find the hypotenuse. Now. Here is, in number 12, your right angle, obviously making that classic L shape. They're saying here that each grid square represents two units. So what we want to do is count off the legs, because those we can count on the grid boxes. The hypotenuse we couldn't, because it goes diagonally across the grid box. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 tall. Again, each grid box represents two per the directions, and it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 wide. So that's my legs in the formula A and B, 12 and 16. So I've got 12 squared plus 16 squared equals my hypotenuse, which I can't do that way, but I can find it using the formula. I can't count it out. Uh, equals my hypotenuse C squared. All right, so let's work this out here. 12 squared changes into 144. And 16 squared, 16 times 16 is 256. And that equals C squared. C squared then equals 144 plus 256, which is 400. I'm going to take the square root all the way across, because remember, that side of the triangle isn't C squared, it's just C. Square root undoes square, so when I take the square root of 400, the result is 20. So the hypotenuse in triangle 12 must measure 20 units 